Welcome to Jim Dalton's presentation, How to Observe a Market, Part 2. Jim and I want to thank all of you for being here today. Great to have you. We have a full house, so we appreciate you all coming out. This webinar is being recorded. We'll be posted at Jay Dalton Trading not long from now, uh, after we finish. At the end of the webinar, we have a contest we're going to announce, so please hang around. And the part one of this series was done last Wednesday. So you can see that at jdaltontrading.com under webinars, recorded webinars. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jim. Hi, Jim. Thank you very much. Um, this, but when the time we get done with today, if it works the way I want it to work, this will be one of the most important sessions that we have done. Not because of the slides, we're going to go through the slides, but because of some of the things that have happened in the market and some of the examples, including today in the ES. Okay, so we'll start off, and this is how to observe a market, part two, trend days. We'll start with trend days. We're not going to spend a lot of time on trend days. We're going to go through a trend day, we're going to talk about them, and then we're going to move to rotational days. And there's several things that I want to show you on rotational days. And I don't think they're things that are going to be picked up by anybody else. I've never heard anybody talking about, other than us, talking about some of the things that you're going to hear today and see the results of what followed. Okay. Wednesday, March 1st, we've all kind of seen this day, was a trend day. Most trend days usher in some kind of change. That change can be a breakout to the upside or the downside, or the trend day can also result in an excess. It can also, it can be a uh, the end of an auction, uh, depending on how it formed. We had an upside breakout into uncharted territory on the first. Trend days usually start outside of range a prior trading session. And that's what the one on Wednesday did. You remember, it gapped higher on the morning. And that's, so you got the gap rule as well as the trend day. It is not uncommon for a trend day to happen via a gap, which is what happened on the first. When a trend day happens as a result of a gap, the gap trading rules, in fact, if the, if the market is going to continue strongly in the direction of the gap, it usually happens fairly early, almost immediately. Sometimes what you will get, the market will gap higher, you will attempt to trade lower if, it, if, it, if it's a gap higher. It'll attempt to trade lower, and then it doesn't fill the gap, and it turns around and goes higher. Usually, if it's going to fill the gap and there's any serious selling, that usually is a reversal that happens instantaneously. It's very seldom that that happens. Most gaps continue on the day in the direction of the gap. If the, as we said, if the auction is to move in the direction of the gap, it usually happens fairly quickly. Trend days are often recognized via one time framing. One time framing simply means that the second bar does not take out the low of the first bar, and you'll see an example in a little while. The third bar does not take out the low of the second bar. You have to take out the prior bar by two ticks in order to qualify as a cessation of one time framing. Most common errors that traders make, and if you've been with me for any time, amount of time you hear this over and over again, is fading a trend day. I don't know why traders just can't resist fading a trend day. If you're going to fade a trend day, you want to fade it late because you want to fade it after you have substantial information. 
Another thing that traps traders on a trend day, trend days normally have at least one measurable pullback later in the session to allow inventory to come into balance. Once that inventory comes into balance, the market generally continues in the direction of, <coughs> hold on, in the direction of the of the trend. What happens to a lot of traders, the, it'll be a big day to the upside. Late in the afternoon, they see the market start to trade off. They let it trade off quite a bit, and then they think this is it. They go in and they, and they fade the trend day, and usually a big wave rolls over them, and that's the end of it. So you've got to, you've got to understand how trend days happen. When you have a pullback, on, the, on an afternoon pullback on a trend day, that pullback, and let's say this one is up, that pullback becomes a significant reference going forward. If the market does not find acceptance the following day back below that pullback low, then there has been no change relative to the day of the trend day. If there is to be a change, normally you will find that there is acceptance back below that reference. Interpreting structure following the trend day helps us assess the odds of continuation, whether it's con the odds of continuation, balance, or reversal. Okay, so so far we're talking about trend day Wednesday, March 1st. We've already talked about this day previously in um, one of our sessions. You know, some people were there, some weren't. But let's take a look at it. You see that the market gaps higher in the morning. It's a 14-point gap. The low is right there in the lower left-hand corner at one tick below it. And the market continued to one time frame higher for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven periods. H and I did not stop one time framing because they did not go two points, two ticks down below either of these periods. I've already mentioned there were anomalies on the trend day. Now what I'm doing here, I know a lot of you have seen this, I'm setting this up for us to go watch the following day, which is a rotational day. So stay with me if you've already seen this and heard me talk about these same things before. The anomalies are usually a sign that it is emotional buying. The last time I mentioned it, somebody says, what is emotional buying? Well, you see it by the footprints it leaves on the profile. So it was right in here that it's just, it's just so emotional, people just can't get enough of it. They're just panicked to get in. Now remember also this is a 14 point gap. The larger the trend day, the lower the odds that there will be a reversal to that trend day. And the reason for that is that the larger the gap, the more positions have to be adjusted, whether it's if it's to the upside, the shorts have to cover, and there's other systems that just kick in based on price that get you to the long side. Late in the afternoon, the market moved sideways for a little over two hours. At this point in time on my trading pad, which I've mentioned before, I've marked this anomaly, I've marked this anomaly, and I have marked the area right here where the market moved sideways. That is very unusual. And then you get a big spike up to the high. The high was 2401. 2400 was kind of the magical destination trade. Understand, people say, why? Well, markets are very visual. 2400 is a nice round number. Okay, then the market, instead of pulling back one time, the market starts to trade lower. And it trades lower for the final three days of the trend day. Now, this is not your normal trend day. It's very rare that you'll get the market 
show a pullback of three, three uh, pullbacks, three uh, periods, and then close, you know, fairly well off the high. So at this point in time, we are looking at a, uh, a pullback low. That is our reference for the following morning. Okay, looking at this trend day with the anomalies, and it did make a magical destination high. To me, it looks like a pretty good, a pretty good sign that we are going to trade lower, or at least bounce. What we're looking for, following a trend day, does the market show upside continuation? Does it show bounce, or does it start to show a reversal? If we trade below the pullback low, the destination trade then becomes the top of the lower gap from earlier in that day. Okay, so this that's a we've talked about a specific trend day, but we've talked about trend days in particular. And that's all we're going to do on trend days. The rest of this session is going to be spent on rotational type of days. And we're, we've got several different type of rotational days to review today. Very interesting, uh, very interesting situation. Okay, so here we look, we remember we pointed out the anomalies, the pullback low. Let's go now, and before we, we're going to play that day. Julia has recorded that day. We're going to play it, and then we're, and we're going to talk about it so you can see it in, in action. But before we do that, let me go back and let me work through the slides so we have some idea of the importance of rotational days. And rotational days are really important because about 80%, 85% of the days that we are engaged in are rotational days. Not all rotational days are the same. The mildest rotational situation centers around an inside balancing day. Yesterday was pretty much an inside balancing day. On the mild days, opportunities will be limited to a series of short-term exploratory auctions in both directions. You'll be looking for singles, uh, a series of singles and doubles. You, in this case, will be fading auctions. I will generally be the most productive. But it is still important to let the opportunities come to you. Do not go looking for a trade. And again, I, I've been talking about that a lot lately, but it is extremely important. So what we've, not, we've done now, we've just reviewed a very mild inside rotational day. And sometimes they may take out the previous day's higher low by a couple of ticks, but I still call them a rotational day. That is not the common rotational day, but they do occur. Here's what it looks like. Here is a rotational. Here's a rotational day, and um, I forget the date of that. But you know, it's, it's very. It's a very recent rotational day. Okay. Um, the most common type of rotation day occurs in an overall balancing range. Focus should be on the top and bottom of the range, which represents the ultimate trade location. So you'll see. We have, and when we go in to the third day here, we have a two-day, we have a, a two-day high and a two-day roll low with an inside balancing day. So the two-day high and low become our immediate reference points. Inside day, you're looking to see if you break out of the inside day or look out of the inside day, fail, and come back through it. So in this point in time, we looked above the two-day high. The market came back in, eventually took out, the, took out the low of the previous day, and then, of course, rallied and closed back up near the highs. Again, a very typical rotational day and a more difficult rate rotational day to manage. 
The following day, you look and you see the market looked at the lower end of now the three-day balance, looked at the lower end of the three-day balance, came back in, and of course, then you got a late short covering rally that took the market back up towards the top of the range. Very often, the higher low for the day is established within the first two hours. The low happened in the first two hours. The low happened in the first two hours. The high happened in the first two hours. The low happened in the first two hours. It doesn't have to be that way. It's just something to keep in mind that it's fairly common for that to, hold on. Okay. When you're trading a, a, a rotational day, what you want to do is look for confidence surrounding the open. A high level of directional confidence very often provides you with the preferred trading direction for the day. So we had confidence from the opening on the first day. We had no confidence second day back and forth through the opening. We had confidence the third day, confidence the fourth day. And they did give us an idea of a trading direction for the day. It doesn't mean it's easy and you got a lot of rotation, but it is something to keep in mind. On a, on a rotational day, gaining a feel for tempo will greatly improve your odds of success in trading these days. An early directional move with relatively slow tempo, tempo has lower odds of seeing continuation. Moderate temper, tempo is more likely to show directional continuation. Tempo that appears to be too fast will likely civil signal short covering or long liquidation. And when you get short covering or long liquidation, it's just going to go until that is completed. Markets must always handle the first line of the business. And the, and the current business, current day's business is if the market's too long or too short, that's what the market has to handle. Developing value is usually a key to a preferred direction for placing trades. Generally, you want to trade in the direction of developing value, taking profits on spikes, and reestablishing your positions on pullbacks on pullbacks. So in the first day to the left, rotational day, direction is up. You want to take you generally want to take profits on spikes by pullbacks. Uh, it worked on this day. Uh, the direction of the, Value was over, overlapping in most cases. In, in this day, the the uh, direction was up, but value stayed lower. So that's that's a little tricky. They don't always happen according to the way you want them to happen. The migration or non-migration of the POC is a solid way to assess risk on a trend day. The migration of the POC in the direction you trade is supportive of continuation. That POC is already also important if there is some unusual occurrence. For example, today we had a break uh, in the afternoon following uh, you know a, uh, an announcement, and the market did come back. So we're, we're going to talk about these more specifically. These are general rules. The non-migration non of the POC increases the odds that a reversal will occur. Now, it didn't happen here, but you'll see a lot of times it is certainly something to monitor. Third type of rotational day. So we talked first we talked about a rotational day that is a very mild rotational day where it's an inside balancing rotational day. Secondly, we talked about a rotational day that occurs within a trading range or, you know, fairly well-defined trading range. Those characteristics of one, first type, and second type are entirely different. The third type of rotational day occurs with the direction of the current trend or trends. The days you're looking at here, the daily weekly, monthly trends were all up. When you're trading 
in a trend. Monitoring for continuation is key. In an uptrend, for example, you want to stay with value that is developing as higher, overlapping to higher, and unchanged. In a downtrend, for example, you want to stay with value that is developing lower, overlapping lower and changed. Same observation for valuary development. Tempo and the migration of the POC that we talked about earlier are relevant. So this is, this is with the trends. You've got a trend going where you get a rotational day in a trend. It usually is just an opportunity for the current trend to come into balance. But you don't want to get excited and think too hard about fading the trend. More than likely, you're going to get a rotational day, allows a little balance, and you want to always stay mindful of the longer term trend. And in that case, what you want to do, if the trend is up like it has been for some period of time, it, it, it changed recently, but when the trend is clearly up, you want to be looking to buy breaks and stay with the trend. Monitor value, monitor the monitor the point of control. Okay? So on this day that value is overlapping to higher, value is higher, value was inside, so we got a inside rotational day. Value over here was overlapping to lower a little bit. We never stopped one time frame. Very important. We if there's going to be any reversal, you're going to stop one time frame. So this market this low was not taken out, this low was not taken out, this low was not taken out, this low was not taken out. With the trend, very important to monitor the, the low to see if you're going to get anything meaningful, you're going to get acceptance down below the previous day's low if it is a, an auction that is going counter to the trend. In an uptrend, you want to stay with value. You've, we've talked about these things. Um, before they're, they're, you know they're, you've got the slides to look at their general guidelines now what is important and, and this is where this is where people get confused sometimes it is not that hard to get the general guidelines as you'll see as time goes on it's very easy to, to memorize these things with trend. What really becomes important is being able to recognize nuances, nuances that occur even in a market that is trending higher, for example. Nuances are what give you an edge. Nuances are what allow you to be profitable. With you, if you're a fairly decent, disciplined person, you can follow general rules and, and basically break even. If you're going to make money in the markets, I believe that you have to be aware of nuances and the importance of those nuances. We are going to spend some time looking at those today. Right now, we are looking at slides for you to take, for you to look at, for you to study, to think about the basic guidelines of trading trend days. Once we, have, once we have that down, then in your learning experience, the next thing is to start noticing and picking up on the nuances. And let's see as we go through the rest of the session what, uh, what occurs. Okay, let me escape here. Julia, are you ready to um, run the day following the trend day? Yes. Okay. Let me go back over. And before we run that, if you remember, just a fast review, we pointed out the anomaly. We pointed out the second anomaly. We pointed out the afternoon pullback low. And we said, because remember, we've talked about this before on a, in a webinar. So this is not new. But playing, it's not new, the things we pointed out. But the first rotational day I want to show you is the day following that trend day. Even though you'll say, but there's no excess on the high. It doesn't always happen that way. Remember, you can have no excess if a market, one of the reasons that you get no excess is a market got too long. So 
if there's no excess on the high, it could be a market got too long. No excess on the low, it could be because the market got too short. You remember this day, we had the anomalies. We said the pullback low was more than, it was three periods, uh, more than expected, and almost half back, in fact, just a little bit above half back. And we said it was very unusual the way it moved sideways for an extended period of time. Okay, so now, Julia, let's play, let's play the rotational day following the trend day that we've talked about so much. Okay, great. I'm taking the screen. And if you want to review, Jim had at the end of last week's Wednesday webinar, he had reviewed his scenarios for Thursday toward the end of the webinar. So if you want to look at that, uh, review that webinar, that's where you will you can get some uh, context or background. So before, you, before, before you click, before you click, let me just review those scenarios very quickly. Scenario one was if uh, the market stays with above the pullback low, you're either going to get continuation or balance. If the market got acceptance below the pullback low, the destination trade becomes the top of the gap. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, you can see my screen, correct? I can, yes. Play again. Okay. Opens a tick above the pullback low. So you see we're trading we're trading back below it. Remember, two of the of the targets down here will be the anomalies. We mentioned that before. That's a sign of, of emotional buying and a market that may be well getting ahead of itself. And you had marked that pullback low. That was your reference for trading this day. Yes. The scenario is really hinged yeah. on that pullback low right. reference. Now we're playing this. This whole thing will take out what five minutes to play? Well, yeah, maybe a little less, maybe five minutes. Okay. okay. So let's stop for just a second. Okay. Okay. Here's one of the things that is very, very important for you to appreciate. When the market has been up for quite some period of time, up to about fifteen percent since the election. So when a market starts down, you're going to have the majority of people of, of inexperienced traders are still going to be buying every little pullback. So you're going to get a tremendous amount of volatility, more than likely, in a day like you're looking at right now. Because remember, traders do what works until it doesn't work anymore. So you have, to, you have to be able to be pretty firm in your belief. So and I was just going to put it there, Jim, where this is the all-time high last Wednesday, okay, just for okay. context as you're talking. Okay, okay. Let's go back to the... Okay, so remember as we play this, the expectation is to see considerable volatility and rotation. Okay, let's continue playing. Mm -hmm. Okay, one anomaly has been hit. Remember we looked at that the day before. Remember, we're playing this at pretty good speed. Okay, we're now down to we're down to the second anomaly. Remember, the overall destination trade is the top of the gap. Look at the volatility in here. Remember, this is the thing you have to condition yourself 
And it, what will happen when you get one of these days? You will question yourself so many times it's unbelievable because of the volatility. So you have to have a pretty, a pretty good appreciation what's going on. Remember, one of the filters is value. What is value doing in what we're looking at here? Value is developing overlapping to lower. When value is overlapping to lower. Generally, what we want to do, if it's to the downside, we want to short the market, and we want to do what? We want to take profit on spikes down. Then you let the market rally, and if you're going to trade it, you put the trade back out on the rally. These are very difficult days to trade. They are very emotional. And unless you have a firm understanding that we're, what happened the day before, we're down below the pullback low, change has taken place, and an appreciation that, you know, you may be, if you're trading this correctly, you may be one of the few people that is overall right on the market. A lot of people, they're buying every break, and you're going to get that volatility in this market. Remember the gap, the, the ultimate destination, and again, we said this before the market ever opened. We said it at the end of the trend day, but look at the volatility in here. And the questions come up. You're indicating there's change relative to the afternoon of the prior session. So, yes, that, we gapped higher, but then the pullback low late in the day, that was your fulcrum for change, what you were using. Absolutely. That's why I said the pullback low is always my reference, and that's something I've used for as long as anybody has been with me. And I don't know if I've heard anybody else talk about that other than if they've been through, you know, one of our sessions. But again, trading is about change. Opportunities come when, when change is occurring. Now, the biggest opportunities occur when change is occurring. But look at this market. How Just look how difficult this market is with the volatility. Can you see yourself getting chopped up in this market? You know, and if you're sitting there, you know, still buying dips as the market, you know, had been for so long, not recognizing that there's a change taking place, or at least for this day, then you're more than likely going to get going to get slapped around on this day. Okay? Now, stop, if you can stop right there for a second, please. Mhm. Mm okay? Notice a period low, the low, the AL period low right here is a single tick below the A period low. Where Could you repeat, can I show that on my window trader if we can't see it on this screen? Well, we can see it right here, can't we? Point, tell right me at. where you're looking at. I'm, I'm okay, not following. Look at the, look, I, I'm sorry. On the left-hand side, look at the low from the trend day. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay. Here's the, the low from the, the trend day. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the low from the previous day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now come along to the L period low on this rotational day. Notice that at L period low went a single tick below the low of the trend day. That is a poor low. Well, a weak it's, low. It's it's a weak low, I'm sorry, it's a weak low because it is exactly or within a tick of an exact reference. Again, that is not something that most people have the experience to recognize. A lot of times people get excited, they want to buy the low. They're trained, they, particularly traders that came off the floor, they are positioned to buy uh, lows and sell, buy the daily low for the day before, sell the high. That's what this market did. Now, if you're looking at this for an opportunity, okay, when, when I look at this market, it's a change from the previous day. We're getting acceptance down below the, uh, uh, the pullback low. The low on this is a weak low because there, it's exactly at a reference. And think of it this way, who buys exactly at a reference? It's certainly not the longer, stronger time frames. It is usually the weaker hands trader, those that will turn tail and run the quickest. Okay? Something, remember I said early on, once you understand how trend days work, then it's the nuances 
that can really make a difference. Okay? The first the first nuances we looked at here were the anomalies from the trend day. I'll put that. The nuance was the pullback was the pullback low. Yep. Okay. Another anomaly was the pullback low. You're now looking at that's the that's a second nuance. First nuance is the anomalies. Second nuance is the pullback low. You don't see that any place. And now we're looking at the third nuance, and the third nuance is the L period, the L period low. Okay. Did you go ahead and play this day out? What's, what's... Nope. They oh, okay. Showing so, so they could follow okay. along. As okay. You okay. Now watch what happens. Remember I said that was a weak low? I said, poor Julie corrected me. It was a weak low because it was an exact reference. Look what happened in there. Look what happened, how it came back down and took that out. Okay? Those little nuances, those little nuances are what can make or break you as a trader. Yes, you have to manage your own, you know, your own emotions and everything else. But what you've seen now is a you saw a rotational day. Let's let's not take it off just yet. I beg your pardon. It stopped. Um, I can go okay. to the end. No, I'll go to mine. Hold on. Just give me the screen back, and I'll go to mine. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, are we back at my screen? Yep, you just got a dialogue to show it. Okay. okay, great. So, there's what the day looks like. Now, it, we talked about it before it happened. We saw it happening and we saw it below the reference, but I can tell you it would have been a very, very difficult day to trade unless you really understood the nuances, unless you understood the emotion that the majority of people out there, the weaker hands traders, the majority of them were going to be buying every break because that's all they had to do for some period of time. So that's adding a tremendous amount of volatility to this market. Okay, let's go on um, to... Um, I can okay. tell Friday we're, we're, or, I mean, uh, yesterday. Okay. Yesterday. What I want to do, let's stay with my screen for a minute. And then uh, we're going to replay. Uh, Julia has recorded yesterday, and we'll replay that. Yesterday, and then I'm going to talk about today also. So yesterday, we had the first thing that you notice, talking about we started off with what appeared to be a minor change, just one day that the market um, Gave us lower value, stopped one time frame. But now we've been doing time framing lower for one, two, three, four, five, and six days today. If anybody was on the webinar that we did not too long ago with Peter Resnicek. One of the comments I made, and one of the comments was that once you re-enter a prior trading range, the ultimate destination becomes the lower extreme of that trading range. It is always amazing to me the market never seems like it's going to get there. It never feels like it's going to get there. It always feels like it's going to rally. And somehow, some way, it is uncanny how often the market will manage to get down to the lower end of that extreme. If you take a look at what happened this afternoon, how close that came to the lower end. So we've traded from the top down to the basic low of that multiple day trading range. 
Again, anybody that's been with us for any point of time has heard me say that over and over again. It's you have disbelief, you don't believe it's going to happen because it doesn't happen easily. But it is absolutely amazing how the market will find its way down there. And you see it did that today. Okay, now, with that in mind, so we are now, we've been one time framing lower. We are, as we come into yesterday, we are back within, I guess it's a six-day trading range. We are back within that range. Okay, and let's now, Julia, let's go play yesterday. Remember, yesterday is a rotational day. It's another example of ro rotational day. Now, this is a rotational day with the short-term trend, which is now to the downside. This is before the open. It okay, opens in the middle of the previous day. Remember, there's a very prominent point of control. Opens right in the middle of that day. So give the market, one, expect volatility, expect rotation, because we are in, we are in balance. We are within the previous day's range. We open almost center in that range. The expectations are that we're going to have a rotational day. And the expectation is, that it, you know, it will be looking for singles and doubles. Okay, so see, we've been back and forth through the opening. We've been back and forth through the early range. Notice that we did not take out the high from the previous day. Back down through the opening. Okay, if you stop there from, whoops. Um, you can't back up at all, can you? Julia? Yeah, Julia, I may there? be able to. Um, let me pause it and see. Well, how far back you want to go? I want to go back to almost the beginning. And then I want to be ready to stop it if we can. I'll try it from here. And then be ready to stop it when I holla. Okay, so we again, we open in the middle of the previous day's range. We go lower from the opening. Continuing lower. Back to the opening. See no real, no real level of confidence, no measurable temp, uh, tempo in here so far. It was slow. Now they, now they do a little selling to the downside. Now they're back up again. Okay, now get ready to stop it. When this market comes down, get ready, get ready, get ready, stop it. Okay, notice. That market stopped right at the one tick below the opening. And I, I want you to catch that. It's right in that mechanical opening right there. Very easy to see. Let's go ahead and see if we can continue to play. What it, see how it, what I want you to record is that market, you know, it, it came back. This happened very quickly, but it went back. It hit the opening. It rallied. That was an opportunity to be out because it's more than likely that's not going to hold. It's just a, just a minor point, okay? But the, you got the volatility, you're back and forth continually. Now, what you have to be watching, we did not take out the previous day's high. That is a, remember, we're one time framing lower. No matter how exciting you might get, we did not take out the previous day's high. A lot of volatility in here. They're pressing on the high. They're pressing on the high. They didn't get it. We did not get 
We did not get the early morning high. We did not get the previous day's high. So it's a rotational day. We're looking for singles and doubles. It's not a particularly easy day. Um, Tim, the question, singles and doubles just means smaller uh, profit targets. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not looking for big hits. Yeah, big thing. Okay. So now we're getting an inside, an inside, inside day. Okay. Now we're down to unchanged from the previous day. Look at this market. It bounced from just about unchanged from the previous day. Still inside. Okay. Now if we can stop for a second. We are one time framing lower for several days now. We do not trade in a vacuum. The market started to focus on crude oil, but commodities in general. Again, some people say, well, why don't you just look at the profile? Uh, I look at the profile, but I don't trade in a, in a vacuum. I don't trade off of oil, but I'm aware that oil and gold have really, the, the commodities overall, have really started to, to pressure. And, and crude gets back under, under $50. And what's going on in here? You don't, this is important, I don't see any evidence of longer term selling in this market. If you had longer term selling in this market, even though we're one time framing lower, you're not going to be back and forth through these openings. You're not going to stop exactly at unchanged. It's not going to happen that way. What we have here is a lot of short-term money trading the market. And that's going to be the most emotional type of money where, you know, it's us. It's you and I. It's, uh, we're emotional. We're short-term traders. And that's going to be sometimes the most difficult markets to trade unless you really can keep a perspective. The perspective here is we're one time frame lower, we're trying to trade with value, and we're looking to say rotational days. Okay, let's continue to play. Half back to that right at half back. Who trades at half back? You know, it's just it's a lot of short term money in here. Back around the opening. Still remaining an inside day. Rallied up, still did not take out the morning high, nor did it take out the high from the previous day. So we're still one time framing lower. Notice that low just before it went here was exactly at the opening, the green, the green button. Okay, so we, we've got a point of control. It's, notice that point of control. Okay, now we're now we're getting down and we're taking out yesterday's low. Okay. Prior pit session low's been taken out. We're going to want to watch very closely when the L period, we're going to want want to watch very closely the L period rally here in a couple of minutes. Now look again. There's no excess on the low. So the odds of that being the low are pretty poor. Okay, stop. Can you stop there, Julia? L period goes exactly to half back. When the market is loaded with traders, that is not uncommon. It is not a strong reference. And I'm going to I'm going to come back and I'm going to use I'm going to discuss that reference later at the end of this day. Notice, what do we have right now? 
we have a very mechanical rally to exactly half back. We have a poor low because there is no excess on it. So we have we have a lot of confusing information in this rotational day. Okay? Let's continue to play. Okay, we talked about that low. We've taken that low. You see the importance of those of those references. You say, well, you could say, well, but the L period was a reference too. Yes, it was. Uh, but the direction is was down. Uh, values unchanged. Okay, the market's the market's breaking. Notice the volatility. If this were really serious money, selling this market, you are not going to keep coming back into the previous day's range. Okay? It's a lot of emotional. They're following things like crude oil. Okay, let's continue to play. That's the, pretty much the end. Okay. All right. Do now, you want to comment on that, the 45, Jim, or the POC migration? Yes. Just yes, yes. Thank you very much. This is what we call a 45 degree line, where the point of control, and remember, another description of the point of control is the fairest price at which business is being conducted. The fairest price at which business being conducted did not migrate lower through all of this afternoon rotation. What that signifies to me is that traders are selling the market it's short in the hole or they're selling it short below the fair value. That is very often a disastrous situation, or it can be. Now, if this had been a double distribution day, let's say we broke, we broke away from this and established a whole new distribution down here. Now, I would let that point, the significance of that point of control go away. But the fact that it didn't go away um, tells me that the market's probably very short. Now, I'm going to show you, and, I, and those of you that, that have been around know I only talk about something I did if, in fact, I talk to other people about it. There's two people out there today that I, uh, Jim, who was over in Romania, who I was talking to yesterday afternoon, and David, who is in uh, uh, Rancho Mirage, California. I talked to them yesterday afternoon, and I basically said I went home. I had during the day I bought the 2360 puts. I went home with a position of the 2360 puts and long 66% uh, or basically two thirds long at 62 even. Now, let's talk about the reason for that trade. One, the point of control did not migrate lower. Two, remember the L period high was exactly at half back. Now, it changed after the market went lower. It was exactly at half back. And that was an indication to me that I had emotional, mechanical selling. So I, I stack that on top of the point of control not going lower. And I say, it's a lot of emotional selling. I think there's a pretty good chance the market's getting too short. Now, I add one other point to it. And uh, my friend in Romania pointed it out. And I was already watching it. With all of that pressure to the downside yesterday and all that emotion, the market did not even get to the overnight low. So now that you're talking about where, where do you get an edge in the market? Where do you get an edge in the market? You just, you know, is that, is, is what I'm talking about, is it fairly complicated? Does it take a while to get there? Yes, it does. But remember, 
You're not going to compete and make money without being able to understand markets at a very high level. That's what we're trying, we're trying to help you with as we go through these intensives. And that's why we try and do the intensives and all our learning things with immersion. Yes, we used some slides early on to give you the basics. They will give you the basics. They will give you the guidelines. But the real learning comes with being involved and being immersed in the market and having somebody walk you through what they're seeing. Okay. Now, again, remember, we get people get frustrated because we do not tell you where to buy or sell. Uh, it's not our intention. Our intention is to teach you how to think about the market, how to think about trading, how to think about opportunities, and remember how to let the market come to you. When I did this trade, I let the market come to me. I'm processing information, the point of control, L period going exactly to half back, not getting the low, not getting the overnight low, and right down here at 62, my 60 puts, I went long, I went long futures, 66% against those, and willing to take that trade home because I thought the market was too short. Okay, now, Julia, you did not record today, did you? No, not no, I haven't. Okay. Um, there is a so question. let me go back. Okay, go ahead. Pardon me. Um, someone's asking. It seems great to appreciate this in hindsight. However, how effective is it to determine this price action in real time? And you're bringing that up now as you you know put your trade on. But if you want to comment on that. I don't know how to comment. That's what I've been talking about, observing. Uh, it's what I'm talking about, how to think about this market. Um, that's, what I've been, that's what I've been talking about. And uh, I was saying how the trade came to me yesterday, but I'm showing the things I was looking at in order to think about the market. And I was, th I was trying to show you what I was thinking about in real time as Julia was replaying. Yes. Because that's exactly what I was thinking about yesterday. Yeah, the question was asked a little earlier, but I just wanted you to be aware of it and you know, focus on it as you, you're talking. That's okay, well, yeah, I, I think that's what's addressed. Okay, now, if I can have the screen back. Okay, now, let's take a look about, you, you, Put a position on and you manage for continuation. So you know I came home last night and thinking the market was too short and thinking we would get short covering today or good odds of short covering. Remember, my position was hedged, so I'm not going to get murdered. I would prefer it to go up. But now let's talk about what takes place. Overnight inventory, trade it off. Okay, now, oh, wait a minute, this is, this, is that not last night's overnight inventory? When, to make the comment that I didn't mark on that recording, that the overnight inventory was short. Oh, okay, yes, that's always a factor before you start trading for the day. Okay, now, let's take a look. There's last night's overnight inventory just a little tick or so below the previous nights. Okay, now the market opens this morning right here at the, at the green dot. It trades off a little bit and then the market rallies. As I was telling somebody who was talking this afternoon, I said, I started, I started to get a little bit emotional this morning thinking, hey, maybe, I, maybe I've got myself a real winner here. Being long the futures, maybe i got something that can really, really work. Because it's doing what I thought it was going to do early on. I wasn't surprised that it opened and they tried to sell it off because that's what's worked. But then the short covering. Then I got the A period. This is the, the low of A period. The high of A period was made near the end of the session. 
And at that point in time, I'm looking and I'm saying, you know, there's just not a lot here. And then B period, remember talking about B period got on the tempo, and I said, wait a minute. So at this point in time, what hit me, and, and this is what I'm, what I'm giving you, is that these are where we get in trouble. I started off greed, emotion was starting to overtake me, thinking, you know, if this went up and because I'm long, you know, two-thirds of the puts, I mean, this I, in the longs, the delta will go very fast. I could really have a winner here if this thing really took off. And, and all of a sudden, I just took a breath, and I said, myself, I mean, I felt it go through my head and said, wait a minute. We open within the previous day's range. It is another balancing rotational situation unless, oh, unless we really get an acceptance back above the point of control. Notice the early morning high, B period, was exactly, it made the point of control. That point of control can also be considered an anomaly because see how it just, it sticks out, those two little ticks stick out. Now, if this was all equal for say 10 ticks, and nothing that stuck out, it wouldn't be an anomaly. But that was an anomaly. We made that anomaly. Then, at that point in time, I said, okay, once I realized I have an inside day, I'm back into that, I'm back, I'm still in that six-day trading range, I'm still one time framing lower on a daily basis, and unless I get any real range extension up above this early period, what is my value going to be today? My value is going to be overlapping to lower, right? So now I have, I have taken off my long positions. I've taken off my long positions. The longs have more than covered for the, uh, for the puts. So I have, I'm still holding the puts. I've taken off the long positions. I'm profitable for the day at that point in time. Okay, now it's just extremely boring for one hour, two hours, three, three and a half hours. What I want you to notice is right there. We talk about no, nuances and the importance of nuances. That market's coming down exactly to the opening price. Exactly to the opening price. One, two, three, four, five times, you know, within a tick or two. And what are short-term traders doing? They're buying every time down to that opening price. They're, they're, they're mechanical buying down to that opening price. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying I think there's a very good chance that this market cracks in the afternoon simply because that is just such a mechanical reference. And I, again, here's, here's where you need to get to. You need to be able, instead of just looking at prices and just looking at references, be thinking what is going on with the people that you are competing against. They are buying, they're using this very mechanical reference to buy at the opening. It's very identifiable. They know where it is. Do you think that's weak money or do you think it's strong money? Weak money doesn't buy exactly at that level. I mean, sorry, strong money doesn't buy there. That's weak money. That's trader money. So it's and every time it goes up, what do you think's happening to the law to the inventory? Is the inventory getting shorter or longer every time they do that? Every time they do that, short-term inventory is getting longer. Now, I was very fortunate because I was I was buying I was buying puts every time this market ran up here. Now, to get lucky, somebody you know the Treasury Secretary or so comes out and sends a letter. We get a break this afternoon, but here's the point: if this market were stronger, if this market were stronger, really good money, you may get a you know a a little hitch down, but you're not going to get this. So what happens when it goes through this and you get that letter? Remember, this is emotional trading letter in this market, money in this market. I still need no sign of serious money. 
So what happens, all of a sudden, they get that announcement. They see that letter, that news, but the liquidation is underway. And boy, I mean, all of these people that buying this, this is weak inventory. They're caught. And there you get two periods of really weak liquidation. Understand how that happens. Understand how that happens. Now, so I get a windfall. But at the same time, and I was on the phone with my friend David, and I'm saying, okay, I'm out, I'm out of the shorts, but I bought a few calls down here. Why? Because the point of control did not go lower. I think this is weak liquidation. I think more than likely they probably got themselves caught too short again. And it was worth it was worth it because it's never this never migrated lower. Look what the market did prior to the close. It comes all the way back up. Again, this is another 45 degree line. It's not like it broke through this and gave us a double distribution. It could have, but it didn't do that. So again, information is there. If you can look at it objectively, stay out of trouble, understand that this potential was there all day. So if you're buying these every time, you better get out quickly and understand that it's probably a lot of weak hands money mechanically buying at the opening, getting longer and longer and longer. When you get the liquidation, you get, you get the liquidation, and then that liquidation triggers some more emotional selling, plus it uh, triggers some momentum selling because of the price spike down. Then we come and we close back up near this point of control. Also notice this afternoon, one of the other things that enticed me to be on the, to go buy on the, uh, some calls on the bottom down here, was that we did make the bottom of that six-day bounce. So now I'm going to open this up for questions, but before we take those questions, let's talk about tomorrow. Right now, we are continuing to one time frame lower. So we have one time frame lower for one, two, three, four, five, six days. We have made the ultimate trade location to the bottom of the six-day trading range. So now that trading range, and you notice that we're almost to the highs of it, if you look at today's high, so now we have a rotate. This was a, a balanced day. When we come in tomorrow, first of all, we have our rules that are observation for trading the monthly jobs report. The, the, the rules that we have, they're not rules. They're guidelines. They're thoughts. They, and they come from observation. And we've seen this be meaningful probably about 70 to 80% of the time. First of all, you hear all the hype about the jobs number. And I'll tell you that the institutions don't pay much attention to the jobs number. Who pays attention to the jobs number on, on Employment Friday? It's the small traders. The institutional serious money they're basically adding up the weekly numbers and seeing it as a trend rather than going on a particular number. So this is basically a retail number. It's not uncommon to have when the day's all said and done have very little change overall. But what are we looking at tomorrow? The general observation we have had, following the number, if the number spikes up or down, I'm sorry, if price spikes up or down following the number. And by the time the market opens, which is approximately an hour later, the market is still hovering around the high of an upward spike or the low of a downward spike. Generally speaking, we have observed that the market will continue for the remainder of the day or a good part of the day, in the direction of the initial spike, up or down. If by the time the market opens, an hour after the report has been issued, 
and we are back to about unchanged, then we don't have, we probably have another rotational day and probably very little going on for the day. Again, does it always work? No. But it's been something that has, um, has given us some kind of a guide. Now, let's put in another perspective before we open for questions. We are one time framing lower. The first sign of potential change would be if we stopped one time framing lower. It may not change immediately, but it would be an indication of the potential for change. If we don't stop one time framing lower, then we have no change. We have no change. We just continue down. The destination once again becomes the, the lower end of this range, and it becomes the fourth gap down here. This is the, this is the fourth gap to the upside. That becomes um, a destination trade or a target if this market sells off tomorrow. If the market sells up tomorrow, then you and you know we start to stop one time frame, which means we trade above today's high. Hold on a second. I'm going to take out the overnight. Okay. So if the market stops one time frame, we trade up, trade up above today's high. Then our references are the previous highs. There's one right there, right there. We just you just keep looking at them straight on up. Okay. So, but right now, all the we're one time framing lower. Today was a net balancing day when it's all said and done. Uh, we've been way past the limit. But Julia, let me take uh, some questions, um, if you will. Julia, you there? I have my mic muted. Is today a classic P formation short covering day? No. No. A, a classic P formation day would be if the market opened on the low and went up and you know you had the stem and it formed the P late in the day. It's not just the P, it is how it is formed. A classic P formation day on the upside would have opened near the lower end of the range. You trade it up, and then you would have gotten the loop of the P at the top if it was a short covering rally. If it was long liquidation, it would have had the stem on the top, open at the top, the market would have trade off, and the loop would have developed near the lower end. No, it, it's not. Another question. Yes, you talked about the 45 line from the recording, and the, what was the point about the 45-degree line? Could you just comment on what you're looking for? I mean, ultimately today, the market did come back to that point of control that Jim was okay. using as a 45 reference. Okay. The point of control is the fairest price at which business was being conducted. Selling that takes place below the point of control is referred to as selling in the hole. In other words, you're selling at prices below value. And usually, you know, if you sell something below value, you take a risk. You take a very good risk, very big risk, that the market's getting what we call short in the hole. It's exactly what happened today. It's what happened yesterday. So, and it, and it happens quite often in trading environments because traders are so emotional. Once price starts going some way, they just kind of pile on. And they don't, what I'm trying to tell give you an idea of how to think about the market in a little broader perspective in there. Um, okay, another couple of questions. Yes, um, do you see any downside continuation being likely or is this price action today a sign of reversal? Nope, well, I, I see no, just what I just got done saying. We're one time frame lower, and if there's any change, we'll cease one time frame lower. Right now we haven't done that. Just because we went down, you know, and bounced, we had some news, the market got too short. You know, it didn't come back up here and race to the other side. Okay? So, no, I don't see any change. You look tomorrow to see what happens. See if it, you've got a one, you've got to stop one time framing lower before change is in the air. 
And we it, have an excess low today? You have an excess low uh, for the day, for the day. But you're still, you're still one time framing lower. It's and one so data point. It's one data point, and it really is coming off of the trade location at the bottom. That the ideal trade would be coming off of this low to get continuation, and you find acceptance back up above the top. That price is. I get the, Twenty three seventy seventy five. That would be the top of that five day or six day bounce. So the ideal long position would be that the market trades higher. We get acceptance above the twenty three seventy. Was it twenty three seventy fifty? I forget exact price. Above that, and they get acceptance, and the market starts to accelerate. That would be the ideal trade to the uh, to the upside tomorrow. And without getting acceptance above that level you're still within this trading range. Okay, a couple more questions. Could the market have priced in a bullish jobs report that, you know, comes in tomorrow? I don't releases you know, tomorrow. You know, I don't it's not even something that goes through my mind. All I saw today, uh, all I saw today was um yeah, you know, well, let me let me ask you another question. What is a bullish jobs report for the market? What is a bullish jobs report for the market? That is a very interesting question. Okay? You got the ADP report on Wednesday, and the ADP report was dynamite, positive for a number of jobs created. Was the ADP report bullish for the market, or was it bearish for the market? This is the, you know, this, these terms, bullish and bearish, are very dangerous terms. They are, they are packed with emotion, and sometimes they're not well understood. Um, when you look at the market, let me, um, let me go here for a second. Here's Wednesday's ADP report. Range 152 to 215, actual 298. That's bullish for jobs. Is that bullish for the market? Now hold on. I'm going to come back and let's take a look at something. What do we have down here at the bottom? Let's see what am I doing here? Uh, that's a bond. Here's I, I'm not very good at manipulating the, the charts here, but what do we see at the bottom? We've got new low in bonds, new low in bonds. So the bullish report for jobs was not a bullish report for bonds. It hasn't been. Here, let's on the same scale, let's put the ES up. Okay? It hasn't been a bullish report. It hasn't been a bullish report for um, the market. So you gotta be very careful. So I don't know, I don't know what the what the market priced in for tomorrow. And I, I think that, that is a thinking in that way as a short-term trader, I think is can be a trap. When you get this idea of bullish bearish in your mind, it, it usually creates biases. Okay, two more questions, and I'm going to have to go in a couple minutes because I'm going to California to see my kids. What about today's anomalies? I don't, well, you've, you've got them down here. I, I, I didn't really, and you may be right, it may be a great question. I didn't really consider them 
because it wasn't part of the overall auction. It was just got caught too short, you know, got caught too short, got the inside bar and up it came. Uh, and so I didn't consider them um, other than the point of control still remains an anomaly. The point of control always has, you know, decent odds that it gets revisited. Okay, a couple more questions. Yes, now that the ES has come back to the six-day balance high, would the 2400 level, the week high up there from the gap day, uh, become an objective if the market stops one time framing lower? If you start to get acceptance above um, this 23.70.75 level and then, you know, take out a couple of these, yeah, it's, it certainly could happen. But it, the important thing is to take it a step at a time. S&Ps, I can tell you over the years, I have, in several cases, I have seen the S&Ps leave no excess on the high and fall 9 to 15%. So is it a good excess? No, but it, remember, it went to exactly a very mechanical 2,400 level. So, you know, might we go back and take out that high? We might. Would I be surprised? No. But you're going to be, as a short-term trader, you're going to be so much better off not focusing on that, but focusing on smaller pieces of information. Focus on the six-day balance. Focus on the inside days. You know, then if we get above the six-day balance, then you start to say, okay, where could we go? Just as if you get below the six-day balance, then you start looking at the gap and say, where could we go? You've got another little balance down here. So I, the statement I use, I like to take it a chunk at a time. Okay, two more questions, then I'm really going to go. Well, in the same spirit to the downside, the question is, if the price trades back below the base of last week's gap, could, it, could that mean we'll continue on to 23.51? that you called it the fourth gap. I think that was the third, and the fourth was nope. last Wednesday, nope. right? Or was Wednesday nope. the fifth? This, that was the fifth. Wow. Well, okay. This is the, this is the fourth. Yeah, if it gets accepted down there, then you're looking at this uh, 23, oh, it's down here around the 2337 level, if you get in this gap. You know, just take it a, just take it a chump at a, chunk at a time and you put a trade on, you then monitor for, con for continuation. All right, final question. Let's see here. We stopped one time framing higher on the weekly. Isn't that important for potential change? Yes, it is. Yep, that's uh, definitely. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good observation. First you start, you're always going to start with the daily, then you start with the weekly. You know, then you look and see what happens on the monthly. But, you know, right now you can, you can follow it pretty much on the, on the daily. If there's going to be a change, if there's going to be a change, it's going to stop on the daily. Now, stopping one day on the daily doesn't mean, doesn't mean that we're going higher. It, it could be just a, a rally just to take off, uh, you know, some, a lot of shorts and have gotten in this market now. So that can that can clearly happen, uh, and you you know you can get one day against it. If you look, when the market remember when this market was one time framing higher, okay, we stopped one time framing here one day, got rejected, did not fill the gap. That's pretty positive. One time frame, one time frame, gap again, one time frame, one time frame, one time didn't stop, didn't stop. You know, and uh, then you stopped again one time framing. You stopped again one. So in this, I'm sorry, in this one, two, three, four, four, five, six day period, you stop one time framing once, you stop one time framing twice, you stop one time framing three times. Okay, now that to me was a clue. That was a clue that we were getting very long, and so they said, the old people say, very long in the tooth for this rally. So this momentum that was taking this market higher 
was starting to starting to lose, you know, lose a lot of its ump. Now, granted, as I said, there was still two back-to-back -back days with poor highs. I thought the odds we were going higher, but it's still an indication to me when I see this many days we stop one time frame that the market is getting very, very tired, and we're probably getting laggard money in the market. And then the markets end that way a lot of times. You get the big, big rally up. You know, they throw in the towel. It's the capitulation to the ups to the upside. And now, you know, we've come back down. We've come back down through a couple of these. Uh, this at least this day that stopped one time frame. So this was an indication we were getting pretty pretty long in the tooth, getting pretty low in the pretty high, uh, pretty closer to the end. But it doesn't mean it's over yet. That's the idea. But you can get excess. This will be excess on a daily bar. It doesn't show as excess on a on a profile, but it will show as excess on a daily bar. And now you're one time framing lower. Okay, honest final question and then I go. Okay. Are anomalies more important to consider on trending days rather than balancing days? No. Anomalies, anomalies are observations. And you take those observations and you put them into context. And that's, you know, that's the thing. They're, they're always interesting. They're always important to record. But part of the problem is a lot of times is when people, when, when you first learn about anomalies and you learn about poor lows and poor highs and nuances and things like that are important, the tendency, the tendency is to want to act on them immediately. You go, oh, I see that. Oh boy, and you know, if it's an anomaly going up, you say, I want to short it. Remember, letting this trade come to you, letting this trade come to you, very important. Today was, you know, am I watching? Did, did I have any idea of of this in the afternoon? None. When I came in this morning. You know, I came in, I thought the market was short, I thought we'd get some short covering, we got some short covering, I'd hedge just in case I was wrong, and I said, whoop, it's an ins we're in the inside, and they we open the inside, it's still in the inside, and that point in time, I just kind of came out of the trade, then I watched, I watched this happen down here, this mechanical thing, and then the market rallied, when the market rallied, I'm sitting back there taking advantage of it, taking advantage of it, well, and it worked. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I was letting this trade come to me, and then of course, when when they got lucky, you know, I thought it would take this out before the day was over. I didn't know it'd be anything like this, but I know that's possible because the lows were so were so weak. So this, you know, after seeing this, the first that's one time, and I started to record it two, three, four, five, and I'm looking at by that time I'm getting. You know, pretty comfortable that the odds are pretty good in my favor. But here, here is another way to use this. What don't you want to be? You don't want to be caught long. You may not necessarily be want to be short, but you know, I always find it so much easier to lose money than it is to make money. And you know, this thing, they're buying every break in here today, right? They bought the break. They bought one, two, three, four, five, six. They bought they bought the break seven times today. You know, and then several of those came from this exact reference point. Okay. So where you do not want to be, you don't want to be long. And if you're buying this break for a very short-term trade, you're taking three and four ticks and you're stepping out. So the first thing you don't want to be doing is being in the wrong trade. Then you can consider being in the right trade. But initially, you don't want to be in the wrong trade. And so you can use this information. You know, I've talked about using this information to be in a trade. But remember, I used this information this morning to get out of a trade. So there's many ways to use this information. It's not going to come to you by sitting here an hour and a half today going through this. But if you think about what we're trying to do in the upcoming intensive, we've added seven weeks starting this Sunday. Uh, we're going to start putting out a report on the weekend, midday, uh, midweek, mid uh, uh, midweek on Wednesday, and you know, so we're going to, and we got an, an additional webinars in order to expose you to this over and over again. So then you got seven weeks that we put on in a desire 
for you to have a fighting chance. We know it's not easy to make money. You can see some of the things we're talking about here. It takes a long time to be able to put these things together and open a market and see what I see right away. So you've got the seven weeks, then you've got the, the first intense uh, mastery series, which is five weeks. Then we've got, I think it's five weeks in between, we continue to do the reports. Then you've got the final and the chat. five weeks and the chat. And we make, during, during that, I'm putting out chat comments throughout the day. So if I were putting chat comments out throughout the day, today, I would have, one of the chat comments would say, be careful, the market is continually coming down to the opening price. And they're buying in the opening price, and it continues to, to happen there. Be very cautious, the risk of being long is very high in here. That would be, that would be a chat that I would put up. So what we're trying to do is string all of this together to give you as much time to absorb what we are talking about so it becomes closer and closer to being second nature to you. And it's easy to get lost. Like I said this morning, this morning, because I was so excited, I hate to admit it, um, I, I got the short, I said, boy, maybe I really got a good trade up here. And then all of a sudden I said, well, it just the light just went off. I'm, I'm within the previous day's range. I don't have any change in here. Yeah, I got some short covering from yesterday, but there's no change. And then I came out of my trade. And But I saw it. But again, it's easy within the emotions. It's easy to forget these things. Anyhow, I hope you, I hope you join us. Um, Can I just a couple of things, Jim? Please. There's a question. If you could go back to the profiles one second, and I, I want to ask this because it's important. Um, you focus on the time spent at price. How do you incorporate the volume at price, or do you? Um, I don't spend a lot of time doing that. I, I'm looking at the overall type of thing. I mean, I might but, notice that if the down here, notice that this is all Relative, it's white. It's relatively low volume. Yeah, make that a little larger. Because we so there was the volume inside the day for very near-term yeah. observations to guide our trades, whether yeah. we're in them or filter some, you know, for taking trades. But, but overall, not, after the day I, is I, done. I, I, am not I am not obsessed. I am not obsessed with volume. I'm not focused on it because it can be very misleading. You don't know if somebody's doing a hedge trade options against futures or futures against options. You know, so you got to be very, very cautious. Now, I mean, I'll look, if the market's going up in the morning, I'm looking to see that, you know, 148 contracts at the high, 44 a year, you know, yeah, I, I'm not, pardon? It's tapering. It's a volume yeah, I taper, mean, I, you know. I, you know, I'm not seeing huge volume and acceptance, but I don't, I don't obsess with it. I spend a lot of time with Trade location, am I in or out of balance? Tempo, direction, developing value. Okay, let me say thank you. Um, so I review the slide for um, the, uh, the program coming up. Oh, are you talking so, about this today or not? Yeah, but you, can you make it large screens from people? It's too small from current slide. Oh, wait a minute. Just, you can page down. Yeah. Did I go too far? Yep, just back up uh -huh. one more. Okay. Yeah, okay, everyone. So we're having a contest this webinar. We wanted to have a little fun, and we appreciate you all coming out and attending these webinars regularly. So today we're announcing a contest. You can go to our Facebook, or you can go to Jay Dalton Trading and click on blog, and you can enter this contest. We're giving away three Field of Vision downloads which is really the centerpiece product that, you know, program that people watch to understand Jim's process from beginning to end. So we're going to have another webinar next Tuesday. It's on our list of webinars at jdaltontrading.com. And that one starts at 9 a.m. And it is the first hour to trade or not to trade. So we're going to be live with the markets and uh, hear Jim make his insights and, you know, comments on that. But we will announce the webinar in that, I mean, the winner of the contest in that webinar, 
Okay, so well, you have winners. until... Three, three winners, right? Yes, I beg your pardon. Three winners. So next Tuesday at the 9 a.m. webinar, we'll announce three winners. You have until a little after midnight, Monday night, to enter. It's chosen by Rafflecopter. We have nothing to do with it. It's an online contest um, software. So um, we'll let you know. So please but you enter. Do have to you do have to register. Yep, you have to register, and uh, you can go to Facebook or our blog to do that. Okay, so thank you, everyone, for being here, and uh, good luck with it. If you don't have the field of vision, we hope uh, you'll uh, think about that. Also, um, we do for today, if you want to purchase the field of vision, if you've been thinking about it and haven't done it, today until midnight, you can use this uh, FOV100 coupon at jdaltontrading.com and you can get $100 off the Field Division download. It comes to you in an email. You can be watching it a couple of minutes after you buy it. So that's there for you. It's only in this webinar and for people who are here watching to show our appreciation and we appreciate uh, you all very much and the questions were great and it really helps us with the presentation. So thank you and thank you Jim. I enjoyed thank that. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay everyone and we'll have this recording up about an hour or so. Okay, so um, have a great night or morning wherever you're at, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Thanks. Bye-bye.